for coming to check out the edition, this edition of the Hubs Creator Meetup, where we share knowledge around hubs, spoke, blender, and design, and help the community create better hubs experiences. Uh, with, with us today is Mark Burton. Mark is the founder of Green Sock, Green Socks, excuse me. Uh, as you can see from that awesome animation going on with his avatar. And he's also a PhD in artificial intelligence. <laughs> so let's give up a couple of emotes for Mark. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, uh, yeah, PhD very, very many years ago. So, yeah, I thought I'd stand in front of you to start with, uh, with this uh, impressive uh, sock feature. Um, I think categorically I was the person who put most effort in, during this conference, at least, for this conference into, into changing their avatar. And indeed, I set up the um, the avatar builder for, for the conference as well. Um, but I will now back out the way um, so we can see the slides. Um, so I thought I'd just quickly run through uh, a few things about um, this conference that I was involved in um, and some quick findings, quick thoughts, uh, what might make a better conference, both from our point of view as, as conference users, if you like, but also potentially things that you might want to do in hubs. Um, so you can probably see that I don't look much like my avatar, neither like the picture that <laughs> that's been chosen to advertise the thing. I'm just some fat old bloke, really. Um, but uh, yeah, Green Socks uh, is my little company. It's been around since about 2005. And we use a lot of uh, QMU, which you might have heard of, particularly potentially in the context of KVM. Um, so we were, we contribute to that community. We make use of QMU um, and we build virtual platforms for people. By that, we mean um, if you've ever built an application you for, for, for uh, an Apple phone or something like that, you get a development environment. Well, if you like, one way of thinking about what we do is development environments for things like brake systems or uh, embedded controllers of one, one shape or another. So that's what we do. Um, the industry that we're involved in, uh, the, the, the organization that, that builds a lot of the standards for this industry is an organization called Accelera that I personally have been involved in for very many years. Um, I previously worked for Arm and some other companies. Um, so Accelera runs a series of uh, conferences once a year in Europe, once a year in, oh, did, was that me? Uh, no, that's okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll chase that down. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't, don't know if I did something, but anyway, um, Accelera runs a series of conferences once a year in Europe, once a year in, um, in the US, uh, occasionally in China, occasionally in India. Um, and they called dev device, oh, sorry, a design and the ver design and verification conference. Um, and you can see the kind of, uh, well, what we all refer to as a vomit slide of all of the various different associate members and corporate members. So these are the sort of people who pitch up to this conference. Um, and typically we would have about 400 people at this conference. So I'm uh, the deputy chair of the the technical program committee. Uh, so myself and the chair generally organize the content of the conference. Um, there's also uh, posters generally. And as you can see, we generally stand around in, in, in a hotel um, eating horrible finger food and talking to each other. So that normally happens in Munich, uh, normally just about in October time, just after the Oktoberfest. Um, so that's how how this whole thing started. How's it going? So we ran this year for the first time ever, obviously, and for obvious reasons, we ran the conference virtually. Um, so what actually ended up happening, if given that we're in a small and limited audience, we tried a couple of vendors who were going to provide conferencing or virtual conferencing facilities. They were incredibly expensive. And actually, none of us were that impressed by what we were going to get. 
Um, somebody who I met on Twitter, I joke you not, who has absolutely no connection whatsoever to anything, said, oh, have you seen this thing called Hubs? So I went and have a, had a look and thought, hang on a minute, this works brilliantly. It's what we need. It's open source. I'm the provider of open source in this community. Um, I probably have a name for it, and I should probably try and pull some open source technology into this conference. So I kind of tried to convince the rest of the program committee and the rest of the organization committee to, to, to go with, with this option. Um, the fact that it was significantly cheaper for us to do so uh, was uh, quite, uh, quite an important part to managing to convince them. Because at this point, they basically said, well, let's just do what every other conference has done, uh, including there's a big conference in the US called DAC, um, which uh, is called the Design and Automation Conference. Um, they, they had done a, 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 a virtual conference earlier in the year. And just like everybody else, they'd done, you know, a bunch of Zoom meetings and some online stuff. Um, and that was it. And frankly, I went to the, the website and was highly unimpressed and just drifted away again. So we all thought, well, hang on a minute. This this does give us a, an option, opportunity to, to show a little bit more about what's, what's going on in the conference, getting people more involved. Normally we'd have 400 people, so we banked on having about 400 people. We kind of thought that people would be excited. I mean, you know, we're technology people. We'd be excited about virtual conference, and we expected there to be lots more people, particularly because we decided to make it free to enter. In the end, we got 300 people registered for the conference overall, of which only, I say that because that's the way I feel about it. Actually, other people were impressed that we even got 132. I was kind of depressed that we only got 132. So, okay. Why did we want to use hubs and why didn't people use hubs? Kind of are the two questions that I wanted to pose to this group, or at least answer for, from our point of view. Uh, why did we want to use hubs? The single driving factor for us was the coffee thing. It goes back to this picture, right? We stand around chatting with each other, I could probably at a push name half the people in that photo, even the gentleman with his back to me, who's a guy called John Ainsley. Um, a lot of these people know each other. We meet once a year. We talk about the things that are interesting in the, in the world at this point in time, um, technology-wise, company-wise, and yeah, business gets done, but, but it's also a, a social event, if you like, and it's a way of keeping in touch with people who, for the rest of the year, if we're brutally honest, we'll be on phone calls with these guys day in, day out, but we generally don't see their face. We generally don't catch up with them as people. So for us, this whole thing about meeting people and having a cup of coffee with them is really quite important. And it was the one thing that we thought, you know, in a Zoom type environment, we're just not gonna get it. So, um, because we use those Zoom kind of calls all the time and, and uh, you know, they last an hour and you get on, you say hello, and you, then you jump into the business and then you jump off, right? You know, and it's, it's formulaic, but you, you, you've got to get the, the work done, as it were, and, and you'll probably have a phone call the, the hour afterwards. So um, there's kind of, yeah. So the chat, the one year when we get to meet each other kind of felt important to us. So that's what we wanted. And that's why we really liked hubs, particularly the idea that as you move towards and away from people, the sound goes up and down and so on and so forth. That whole uh, feeling of presence was, in, was we liked. So why did we only get a third of our attendants turning up to this thing? So um, we did a bunch of stuff wrong, right? For a start with, uh, to start with, we, we kind of assumed that, well, it would just be like the conference, right? So um, the coffee breaks happen between the, the sessions. Well, actually, no, because the coffee breaks between the sessions is when people went off and had coffee on their own in their house, locked down. Um, so it was just not convenient for people, not always at least, convenient for, for people to go and make the effort to go into this virtual environment. Uh, they were off having lunch or doing whatever you needed to do. Uh, so that was one big thing. Um, 
we all we did a we did one uh, we did one or two other things that we'll probably come on to later that we could have done a lot better. Um, but equally, okay, we set the thing up so that we had a portal. I should explain. We had this room, and seven. We had eight copies of this room. Okay, because we were thinking four hundred people, and you guys told us twenty five people per room. So we we're like, okay, eight copies of this room, and then eight what we call stupid lobbies and the lobbies had a connect each each lobby it was complicated but hey whatever basically each lobby had a connection to each one of these rooms and each lobby also had connections to um to the um to the zoom calls and because they were having connections to the zoom calls we thought well yeah but then people's avatars will kind of be zombied in these rooms so we set a timeout that was probably a mistake because people were just getting to chat with each other and poof, they'd disappear. So, um, yeah, portals into, into other environments didn't really work for us and we shouldn't have done it. Uh, the other thing that we should have done that we didn't do, we didn't get the speakers from the conference to come into the virtual rooms. Had we done that, then I think people would have probably followed them. You know, we won't do questions now in the Zoom call, but... Uh, Joe Bloggs is going to be available for the next three quarters of an hour in a uh, meeting room, you know, whatever you want to call it, the green meeting room. Um, that would have encouraged people to come into this room. But again, we were kind of scared. With 400 people, would they all pitch up into the same room at the same time? And that wouldn't work. So that kind of didn't work. The other thing that I realized, and this was after I uh, had the conference was over, but I was trying to explain to people how this stuff worked and what you could do. And I'd noticed that uh, on, the, on the rooms that there's people who've done all sorts of amazing things, including um, uh, a museum. I'm sure you, you know it. And there's also the, a maze that somebody's built. And I showed them these things. And all of a sudden, I twigged, aha. Had we put something like this in the virtual environment, it would have encouraged people to come into it. And that would have helped get more people in. And then, okay, we would have chatted. But I think they wanted, they wanted a reason, you know, a game or whatever it was. Holly is gesticulating in some way. I'm loving Holly's hands. Just don't quite know what Holly is saying to me. Holly, did you want to put your hand up? Sorry, I was talking to someone uh, in the or signaling to someone else in the physical room with me. Oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so glorious. So I, I think those things we could have done a much better. And look, we could have better sized our overall environment for what we what we were going to have end up using had we known. Um, and that brings me to kind of well the things that. Actually, I think hubs could have done better. And look, a lot of this comes down to there's a room number of people in, in the room limit. And that probably drives a lot of the other things. However, there were some things. We set the entire environment up using AWS. We got um, a provider to help us do that. Uh, the guy was absolutely fantastic. But I believe there were potentially some errors made. I don't know whether how this works. but. Um, on the AWS setup, people had terrible problems when they had VPNs. If you go back to the slide with all of the uh, people on it, guess what? Almost all of those people have very, very, very strict IT policies and effectively uh, insist that everything you do, you do from the VPN that they, they provide, which means that um, their access to this, this environment was somewhat hampered by, by their VPNs. Now, I asked some of the people who particularly had problems to attempt to join um, on the Mozilla, hubs.mozilla.com, and they had much less problem doing so. So I believe, though I don't know, that possibly this is a setup issue with our AWS environment. Okay, the second thing that just made people go, ah, oh, it doesn't work, and literally, it doesn't work, I'm walking away, I'm gonna go and have a real coffee. Uh, was the speed that it takes to load a load load a room. So they'd get to the screen where you see, you know, two out of five, seven out of ten, whatever it is, um, and it 
wouldn't seem to move very fast and they'd just drift away. Um, so I have a lot of people saying to me, no, I didn't bother because I just couldn't get it to load. Um, again, was this a, a bandwidth issue? I don't know. I mean, again, these companies tend to have reasonable bandwidth, right? I mean, most of these people don't normally complain about bandwidth. And I'm sitting behind um, uh, an ADSL well. I'm talking to you. My children are currently watching Netflix. I don't believe it's a bandwidth issue, but I don't know. Something wasn't right. And the load speed was 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 important. And especially because we've set up this world where there were, you know, a lot of different rooms, we were expecting people to be able to flip between rooms relatively quickly. That that wasn't as quick as we wanted it to be. And the net result was, you know, people got fed up with trying to wander around the rooms. Okay, the other thing was people didn't see who was there. Um, so because again, we had too many rooms, right? We couldn't, you couldn't see really who was there. Now on AWS, we did have the page where you could see, uh, in our case, we put all the lobbies and you could see how many people were in each lobby. But the whole point was people were supposed to move out of the lobbies into these uh, conferencing rooms. Um, and, and so the lobbies were essentially empty. People didn't know where to go to meet anybody. So you never got to the point where you had kind of a critical mass of people enough that they would actually want to stay in the rooms. Um, and the last thing, which, uh, as you can tell, I desperately tried to do something about in my own case, was you still kind of miss the whole sense of seeing the person's face. And, you know, and a lot of times, I don't know about you, but I remember people's faces much more than I remember their names. Um, so, yeah, we really missed, I think, the, the kind of facial thing. So I can see Holly over there. Sorry to keep picking on you, Holly, um, but you are right in front of where I'm looking. Um, so, so Holly is using one of those avatars. I have no idea whether Holly looks anything like that avatar. And I that actually have no idea common. what avatar I'm using right now. <laughs> Sorry? I actually have no idea what avatar I'm using right now, so I don't know. Oh, okay. You, you've got a like blonde bobbed hair and a red shirt. <laughs> So, and, and, and quite large eyes. I'm guessing you don't have that large eyes in, in reality. But um, the point was a lot of people, and, and, and MEP, whoever MEP is, is, is using something that's obviously completely um, uh, robotic. And, and a lot of people did exactly that. Um, now, I don't know whether Wolfgang, I mean, I know Wolfgang and Matt have got uh, avatars, well, Matt's just intentionally presumably changed his, but I know Wolfgang and, and, and Matt have got an avatar which, at least attempts to represent their face a bit more. Um, I think it would be absolutely fantastic were we able to have like, you know, my camera image somehow put onto the avatar uh, much more in, in, in real time as it were. So you had much more the sensation of, of, of talking to somebody personally. So I think that's something that, 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 that we missed. Um, but as I say, a lot of this revolves around the, the room limit. So um, what could we do better then? Well, um, yeah, okay, I've just mentioned that, the whole idea of broadcasting a camera onto the avatar. I have no idea whether any of these things are even vaguely possible, right? You can rule them out because they're totally unrealistic or, or, or take them on if you think they're, I can't spell tannoy. How do you spell tannoy then? Is it just one in? Yeah, possibly. Um, so the room limit things. Well, look, we came up with a bunch of hacks around room, room limits. Um, that didn't work so well. One of the things that I think would be, I would have thought relatively easy to do, would be some form of a Marauder's Map. I'm sure you've all read uh, Harry Potter. So the Marauder's Map on Harry Potter shows you where everybody is. Um, if we could have had uh, in... Um, in a room like this, like somewhere on a wall somewhere, just a little map of where everybody else was. And then you could kind of, as it were, zoom across to that, that room or I don't know, teleport across to that room or whatever. Um, that would, I think, help a lot. And, and, and it would enable people to, to gather, as it were, um, sensibly. And hopefully, I mean, this is a hack, right? But hopefully people would be sensible enough. You know, you know that you can't get more than 25 people in a room. And, 
And frankly, if there are 25 people clustered around one person, that's not going to be very comfortable anyway. Um, but at least it would give you the ability to see, as it were, what's going on. So I think that I would have thought would be relatively speaking possible. Not that I know anything about the technology behind things, but there you go. Um, another thing that we thought um, would have been really good would have been a way of integrating somehow you know, your Zoomy meeting or something with this environment. Now, I think that should be possible as well uh, on the grounds that, you know, you, we, we're kind of doing that now. But actually, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk um, about in a second, which, which is the bottom of this slide. Um, the whole business of sound. Now, I don't know how you guys are dealing with this right now. Um, maybe you've spread yourself out enough and adjusted your volume so it's comfortable. But we did find that um when we'd set we we didn't i mean obviously you can't really change the the volume settings that much um but when the the volume settings that we had set up or have or the way they are set up we found that the sound didn't quite die off as much as we wanted it to when we were in this bigger room you could just about hear people from one end of the room to the other which was just a little bit annoying when you were chatting to somebody on the other hand, when you were doing something like this and you were trying to present to people, obviously the whole sound die off thing just works directly against you. Um, and, and so one thought that we had was, or at least I had, was would it be possible in the interface to essentially say, you know, I want to, um, uh, I want to shout to the whole room. I mean, maybe, maybe shout is not the right word, but I want to broadcast as it were at the same volume to the whole room or I want to whisper to somebody right next to me, or, you know, default default kind of sound behavior. Um, something like that would then enable us to essentially uh, remove a little bit the necessity to use an external like Zoom environment. Again, one of the problems there would be you would then still need somehow to, to, to still have multiple rooms that could see the same Zoom call, because if you've got more than 25 people, then it doesn't work. But okay, so sound settings was another issue. Um, and then again, uh, that comes back to the, uh, and, and the, maybe this is in the wrong place, this whole thing about if you've got more than one room, um, it would be very, very nice if there was some sort of way of uh, global tannoy or global um, way of communicating to everybody in all the rooms. So we had many times when, you know, we'd say, oh, let's meet in the virtual environment. And of course, at that point, you have to specify exactly where, um, because otherwise you're wandering through all of these 16 different rooms trying to find where people are. Uh, and there was no way to kind of find out. We didn't have either the law of this map, uh, nor a way to kind of shout out to the entire, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, universe of rooms to say, you know, can, can we all meet in such and such a room? Um, so those were kind of some some ideas we had. I don't know whether any of these are, are in any way possible, but they were ideas that we had to 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 try and make things a little bit uh, a little bit better. Um, but yeah, it all comes down to this uh, uh, room limit. Uh, one of the things that I expect you guys to be jumping up and down and shouting about is, well, why didn't we use the lobbies more? And the answer to that is, I, I don't know, and I'm not sure whether it would have solved our problem. And notice we only have a few minutes left. So last slide, I believe, last but one slide. Um, yeah, so did it work? Well, look, I mean, actually, at the end of the day, yes, it did work. I personally felt that I had better conversations in the virtual environments than I did in the real environment. Um, so kind of quality, not quantity. If you look in the real environment, you look closely, there's an awful lot of people standing around not talking to each other. Um, so we got some pretty good comments back as well. Um, and yes, yeah, so people did use Zoom for, for some topics, but the virtual environment was used. And a lot of people said, you know, thanks. So uh, yeah, and would I use it again? Would I recommend it for a friend? Absolutely, yes, uh, and I've done so. Um, it is a good way of doing the coffee chat thing. I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, and I think we might well use it again. Uh, at this point in time, what DBCon US is going to do, not quite sure. What DBCon EU is going to do, 2021, we're pretty sure we're going to go physical. 
Uh, but 2022, we're already wondering, do we want to run one every two years as a virtual event, run the physical event purely to, uh, for two reasons, to open it up to a wider audience that is not necessarily able to get to Munich, and secondly, uh, because it reduces our, our carbon footprint, right? I mean, you know, let's be honest, we should be trying to stop um, flying around the world. So with that, and with only a couple of minutes left, um, do you have questions? Um, I can't quite see you all. Thanks for the clappings. <laughs> you guys are much better at using this environment than, than the people that we had at the conference. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sorry about the uh, runaway uh, video and subtitles. I uh, really should oh. pin that. Uh, I'm going to be I, writing a script that will pin uh, all uh, the We have room. a. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I think that might have been my fault because I was. I have these index controllers, and it's really easy to <laughs> accidentally press the trigger. And I was adjusting my visor, and then I looked up, and things were flying away. And I'm like, Yeah, oh, that's no. okay. It's it's like, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's totally just like something we should have. I should have just like pinned it. I'm not sure who's talking at the moment, um, and I'm not sure if you can hear me. But all I can hear is a broken up voice. I could hear oh. Holly perfectly clearly, but I'm wondering oh, if it was me. Matt. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't hear clearly. Oh yeah, so yeah, I was just apologizing for the runaway uh, video and subtitle. I think it's kind of it. It gets it's like oh no, but it's also kind of funny watching the subtitles. Just <laughs> you know, the physics just take it away. Fly away. <laughs> um, I'm watching the subtitles because I can't hear what you're saying. Whoever it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I can. I can hear fine. I can hear everyone. Interesting. Yeah, um, I don't know what's happened there. I, I can hear you perfectly well, Holly, but I can't hear. Her. No, I think it's Matt weird. talking. I can hear. I can hear yeah. Matt fine. Oh. Uh, sorry yeah, this, about that, um, uh, some of the some of the problems here. This uh, this reminds me of. Uh, this reminds um, me of uh, I went to uh, the Burning Man event in Alt Space, and there's a few s solutions that they have to some of these. The problem is they're not an open source solution, so you're bound to their sort of platform but they have like for the, for instance finding other people they have the, this feature of um being able to uh send you it's sort of a friends list and you can send your friends links to where you are so that they can join you uh, i don't know how easy or hard that sort of identity sort of friend sort of thing would be to implement in hubs but it would be very useful to be able to oh you know my, my friend is somewhere and i can just let them know where i am so they can find me um yeah i also yeah. we also mm -hmm. were, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to get to a place where i can see you all um <laughs> I, I i thought of something like this and and I, I yeah i had similar experience with one of the other companies that we we looked at as well um but i i I also thought about the Marauders map. The thing that I was looking for was was getting some sort of a critical mass of of people in one place. Um, and it wasn't so much that I necessarily wanted to go, you know, I want to be next to my friend. It was more, I want to be where everybody else is where right now. Is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then maybe we get to a point soon. where there are too many people there and then I want to move away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is making me, me realize that we really need to make sure that for, for an event that, that that we have coming up um, to sort of schedule activities so that and, and post that schedule somewhere so that if people wander in, they can look and go, oh, okay, at this time, there's going to be a, a group of people in this room doing this thing so that they know where to, where to go to be around other people. Absolutely, absolutely. And the more activity and the more you can get people to want to come into the virtual environment and experience mm -hmm. it, the more then I believe that they would then, you know, use it to do the thing that you're intending them to do in the first place. I think one of our problems was that we announced the virtual environment like the day before the conference sort of thing, and we never got people, you know, gave people enough time to do it. So if you're able to give people more time to get involved and, you know, and work out that, oh, look, I can, I can, I can press the, the clap thing, you know, mm -hmm. people never found that. 
yeah. um, in our, in our environment. They, they never really found out how to use this environment particularly well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the avatar thing is also an interesting problem. Um, I find that the the fate, like the faith avatars that look like a, a real person, since they don't move, they're a little not creepy, but they're just like the one very that static. Matt and Wolf go. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, Matt's. Matt, Matt and, and Wolfgang have got, got those, and, and I recommended people use those for exactly that reason, to get a face, as it were. Yeah. Um, but um, it's, yeah, at least this one that I built here kind of moves a bit, but it's a bit weird and doesn't really look like <laughs> Yeah, they're in, in um, L space they have like the, uh, the avatars you can sort of customize, and they're cartoonish, but the amount of customization uh, that they allow, as far as like facial feature customization that, that still animates, um, when, when I saw my friend, that was the first time I was in a virtual environment with, with people I knew, friends who were all over the place, but we all came together in this environment. And I could immediately tell who was who because they had managed to customize their avatars in such a way that their personality just shone right through. And I knew exactly who was who. Um, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, but it's, it's harder to do when you don't have as much control over, um, yeah, specific facial features and have that all rigged so it sort of moves when you talk and things like you, that. And you see, I, I mean, it, we, we, in fact, I know because I've done it, we have a lot of control about these these avatars and we could do an mm. awful lot with them or at least somebody who knew what they were doing could do an awful lot with them but the trouble is what you want from the point of view of somebody pitching up to a conference is a button click yeah a tool and to, you know to, it's, to do make it happen exactly essentially it's got to take the picture off the camera and whack it onto the avatar and give you a full body and make it so that the lips move mm -hmm. without having to you know ah uh, Boral dropout. I'm gonna maybe. <laughs> Boral. <laughs> no, I'm gonna look that up. Um, I'm also looking at the the video of of you, and I'm like, oh, that would be kind of neat as it on a telepresence robot sort of sort of um, sort of thing where you know the the zoom screen is is just on a little a little robot, but I don't know how many videos like feeds you can get into a, a space. It's, yeah, now I've seen people suggesting that you float um, the video of the person above the head. And I've yeah. seen that in one of those um, conferencing environments. I it's thought it looked pretty though. bloody horrible. And I just yeah. thought, well, that cops out from, you know, why can't we do it properly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I see that we have kind of... Um, extended our time a little bit um, I'm conscious that people probably is are there any other questions from people I'm gonna have a look at the borrow thing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah thanks so much uh, mark for coming in and doing this I think this is going to be really valuable for anybody doing conferences in hubs mm -hmm. um, yeah. Matt sorry uh, really finding it Difficult to hear what you just said. Uh, could you, uh, Matt? Because you can. Could you be the um, the camera for a second and and try from there? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Um, well, no, it's my pleasure. And look, I'm uh, all right. Um, I, I'm obviously contactable on on the um, on the uh, what do you call it? Um, Chatting to the uh, Discord, uh, but you can equally contact me, unsurprisingly, at mark at greensocks .com if you want to be directly in touch. Um, so yeah, if you if you have any questions or any other comments that, um, or, or you'd like my my views on on anything or whatever, then then I'm absolutely happy to to, to pitch in. In terms of actually doing some coding on this thing, you never know. But uh, at this point, I haven't quite got enough time, <laughs> so I really got into that level of stuff.
Thank you all very much indeed.